Hello, hello, everyone. Hi, guys. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And if you are wondering what I was doing, uh, there it's very sunny behind me in that window, which is like blowing out this front facing camera I have. So it's adding like a little hood. So like you can see that without the hood, um, yeah, I added just like a piece of tin foil to the top of the laptop to try to like block some of that light getting into the camera. So that's what I'm doing at the beginning. There is a little bit of a delay between what you guys see and what is happening live right here, right now. So uh, just so that way you guys know. Um, all right, but anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the April 2020 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. In this stream, I am going to be dyeing some yarn inspired by this photo right here, some mouth-watering blueberries. And this time I went, and sometimes the inspiration photos I've used have already had some like colors pulled. This time I went through with a color picker to draw some different hues from it. And so in addition to all these hues of like a dusty and rich blue, uh, there is that sort of eggplanty deep purple and those little pops of rust, which really interested me. I don't know if I'm going to play with rust color in all of the colorways, but I want to play around with it a little bit. So today we are going to play with food coloring and it is a kitchen safe dye that I am comfortable using my like, kitchen and cooking pots and pans and spoons and things with food color. Today I happen to be using my dedicated dye equipment, which means that um, everything that touches the food coloring, yeah, that everything you should, that touches the food coloring is dedicated for dye. This is food coloring I use just for dyeing, so I'm going to be treating it a little bit differently. But if you don't have a dedicated dye setup, and everything that you use to touch the food coloring is food safe, then you can carry on with all of your kitchen dishes. I just want to use my wide hotel steamer pan, and that is a dye steamer pan, not food safe. So uh, that is sort of all that there. And I guess before we go into it, before I talk more about the dye along portion, uh, if you want to dye yarn with food coloring, you need four main things. You need artificial food coloring, so look for things that say like red number three, red 40, blue one, things like that. You need heat, which we're gonna use the stovetop today. You need acid. We'll be using vinegar. You can also use citric acid. Finally, the yarn. You need a protein-based yarn, which means that you want wool, um, and you can also use like alpaca, silk, uh, mohair, other types of animal fibers. This will not work on plant-based fibers, so yeah, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, one of my favorite food coloring sources is the Wilton Colorite food coloring system. I do have an affiliate link for that in the video description. I also have a, an affiliate link for Knit Picks Bear Yarn, which I'll be using today. And so affiliate, me the, 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 affiliate links mean that I do earn a commission if you purchase something through those links. I do have them clearly marked in the description um, so that way you know. And honestly, it's a good way to like get what you need to die at home and support me at the same time. So it's like a win-win, but yeah, those are my disclosures. Now, for the dye along, you can use whatever type of yarn or type of dye you want. You can use commercial acid dyes, fiber reactive dyes. You can dye roving and blend it together to get the colors that you want and spin something. But I want to see what you create inspired by these blueberries or it really doesn't have to be by these blueberries. You could be inspired by the word blueberries. It's just, we're all going from the same inspiration. And in the recap from this video, which I'll publish in mid-May, um, I wanna feature some of your projects. So you can either share them with me on Instagram using the hashtag Chemnitz Dialong, or you can reply to this photo on my Facebook page with a photo comment, and then I'll pull pictures and feature them in the recap. So people can see, in addition to the yarn I dye, what other kinds of colorways people created inspired by the same photo. Uh, I do have a link to the Facebook post in the video description. I remembered to update that this month. Uh, and I think that that is most of my like blabbering um, that I wanted to do. Good morning, everyone. Um, you can't find your food coloring. Uh-oh, your kids. That is a shame. Condolences for not finding your food coloring. Uh, yeah, the I'm I don't know I'm I'm excited. I have a mixture of 
so the colorite system I said that I love. I've got, I also pulled some Wilton icing colors and I have my Americolor 50 nifty set. So I've got a lot of sources to draw from today. And we're gonna have fun. Another disclaimer, my family is home because everyone is home <laughs> now, right? Uh, and so we could face some interruptions, <laughs> some loud interruptions. So we will see. <laughs> but I did steal my webcam back from my husband who's been using it for lectures. Uh, so, uh, but I also decided to keep things relatively simple and do a two camera system. So I've got the front facing camera uh, when I sit down and chat and then I've got a camera over the stove. So we'll mix colors up over the stove. Uh, what else do I want to say? Oh, right. So uh, some of you have seen some interesting news uh, from a preview email from a certain company. Uh, and I am going to just grab this. So I am actually going to be featured in the May 2020 Knit Crate. Uh, and I'm pretty excited about this. This is not the top secret thing that I've been talking about. Uh, this is more of a last minute turn lemons into lemonade and they reached out to me to help them create a blank canvas cake crate um, which is going to include some bare yarn and some kool-aid and so i am really really excited and honored to be featured in this um and so yeah there's still like some details that like we're working out like it's all sort of like last minute but uh i hope to do a or i am planning to do some kind of kool-aid dyeing live stream in uh in may at some point but uh really kool-aid and food coloring and vinegar sort of translate really well back and forth the one big perk of kool-aid and maybe we'll end up pulling some out that grape would be pretty good for the purple um the one big perk with kool-aid is that uh, it is a powder, so you can speckle with it. And that's harder to do with like liquid food coloring drops. So that is one big, big perk of Kool-Aid. But yeah, so I'm actually gonna drop in the chat um, my like Knit Crate affiliate link, which I do earn commissions through that. I also have a code, Chemnitz20, where you can save 20% off when you sign up. If you sign up today, your first crate would be the April one. So if um, which I haven't received in unbox yet, but if you want your first crate to be the May crate, uh, then you can sign up on May 1st, um, or you could sign up and get the April one as well. But, uh, I'm excited to be part of that. Hello. Um, yes. So they, yeah, the, the preview just went out and yeah, I'm going to be featured in it. And so I am. I'm really excited. It is, um, it's, it's nice. Like, and what's funny is like when they started doing like influencer crates, I was like, Oh, that's so cool. And people are like, Oh, are you going to be one? And I was like, no, no. Cause like the people they were featuring are bigger than me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Then, you know, when they realized that, um, you know, their, their May, their shipment of yarn for the May crates wasn't going to make it in time because of COVID and shutdowns and the mill, you know, the mill is shut down for obvious reasons. Um, and so, uh, Knit Crate sister company is a bare yarn company. And so they were like, this is, you know, let's make lemonade. And then they're like, let's try with me. They're like, let's make literal lemonade with Kool-Aid. <laughs> and so it's, it should be a lot of fun. Um, uh, I don't think the kids really know <laughs> much about it. Uh, so yeah, it'll be, um, sorry, I don't drink coffee, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, the kid, the kids are excited, um, because they know I'm happy. Uh, yeah, uh, the, you know, there are like, oh my gosh, like there are so many things that I didn't even realize when it comes to like sourcing crates. But, uh, the nice thing is that with like one packet of Kool-Aid contains a good amount of color and the video I'm filming for for May for this um, I used just one packet of orange Kool-Aid or I used three packets total for 400 grams of yarn and so um, 
yeah, and actually the colors I got are very similar to like what Net Crate did for their previews and stuff, which is cool. Um, so it's good that I had cool in on hand. Um, but they, uh, but if you want to pump up the volume with um, Kool-Aid, then you can add liquid drops to it. There's enough citric acid in a packet of Kool-Aid that it can handle some supplementation. I wouldn't do like 50 drops of color right. That's like a lot of color, but it can handle like some more or you can add more vinegar as well. Um, yeah, that, that little pop of that rust color is really, really exciting to me. Um, all right, I'm gonna stand up. It's weird, I normally don't do these live streams. I'm gonna just keep that, I guess, small up there. Oh, actually, I'll move it over here so I'm not blocking. And normally I don't do these streams, normally I try to do these streams in the evening versus the morning. And so doing it in the morning, well, I'm fresher, so that is actually really nice for me, but it's just, it feels weird. <laughs> okay, so I've got, a lot of food coloring colors and here is my AmeriColor set. Oh dear, the webcam out of focus. Sorry about that. Uh, unfortunately, the light of my uh, microwave is still burnt out, but the colors seem like they're fairly okay right now. So interestingly, when I was looking at this 50 nifty set because I'm like 50 colors, there's some in here, like there's an eggplant purple, and a navy and like some beautiful dusty blues that seem to just like immediately fit with their inspiration maybe even a little bit of that berry pink but when it comes to like that rust color there isn't really something that good in here uh, i didn't put a link to this in the description i don't think maybe i will later um, but the problem with this blue is it probably has titanium dioxide, which I hate. Um, yep, so I would not be using that dusty blue. I don't think that the d deeper colors do. So titanium dioxide is the clo is basically like white food coloring, which does not dye yarn. So unlike paints, which have um, an opacity to them, uh, dye doesn't. So you can't dye white on top of another color. The dyes are sort of additives. So it's sort of like you get a layer of stained glass over it, if that makes sense. So it's, there's like a more transparency to it. Um, just checking, I don't want anything with titanium dioxide. It just, you have to wash it out. It's fine. But like, instead of, I'd rather use like delphinium blue from Wilton than, what color is this, than Wedgwood, even though this looks like a really pretty color from Americolor. And so let's see what other colors I pulled. Okay, so I pulled navy blue, which is number 134, eggplant 145, and burgundy 118. Um, in Wilton icing colors, I have two different blacks. I'm not sure what formulas they are anymore. I have copper. I grabbed some rose, some royal blue, sky blue, teal, violet, uh, burgundy, delphinium blue. And then I have all the colors, I think, of color right on hand. So that's sort of the palette that we are going to work with today. But I do want to get um, some different cups so we can mix up some different colors here. Do, do, do. And I'm mostly going by feel versus like keeping track of the proportions of all the colors. But let me check and see if there's any questions. And what is that? Um, um, yes, I, that, I mean, I think so. Like for, for that, like my part in that is basically done. Um, there was a question about my diet supplier project, which Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure, like, what, I think, like, there was initially, like, a projected date, 
and then I wasn't told that it was delayed, which is why I said something in the first place. Otherwise, I wouldn't have said something because I thought that we were a couple weeks from announcing it back in October. <laughs> it is still coming, though. Um, <laughs> I'm just not sure when. Um, the blueberries make you want to dip dye. Yes. Ooh. Lion Brain Fisherman's Wool is a great bear yarn. Um, and the fun thing... One reason why I picked a dark inspiration, um, I'm adding half a cup of water to each of these cups. Uh, one reason why I chose to do something so pigmented is because this is a colorway that if you have something that is pastel in your stash, it is a good candidate for doing some over dyeing. Um, because I know for everyone, supplies are limited and people might feel like dyeing yarn and yeah I wanted to try to make it as easy for people to participate as possible. Uh, so if I was going to go through my Dharma acid dye stash what colors would I do? Off the bat I would be tempted with uh, some gunmetal with some navy, uh, probably deep purple. Um, I think for the rest what's that foxy one I like? Um, let me grab my thing. No, fine. I'd probably want to like do fine, but with a tiny bit of saffron spice in there for the rust color. And I guess that may be some delphinium blue. I don't have a good, like, super dusty blue. That might be a little too purpley, so I might mix the dusty kind of blue and the nice pale blue. Um, sort of off the top of my head, those are the colors that I would pick um, out of my stash if I was using Dharma acid dyes. Uh, what did I want? Um, and, and speaking of acid dyes, um, you know, when I dye yarn with acid dye powders, I wear a respirator mask. I wear a, like the NIOSH or like, I don't know if you say the word or if you spell it. I wear like a certified particle mask, right? And so... Unfortunately, like now is not the time to go and buy those for obvious reasons. Um, and yeah, and so one reason why I'm doing more food coloring is because it is like easier for people to access the materials who want to start out. Um, so I will be wearing gloves today, just so I don't stain my fingers, but you don't have to be wearing gloves with food coloring. Um, it just will stain your hands and come off. Uh, so the other thing that's funny is I had blueberries, like frozen blueberries that I bought with the intent of dyeing yarn. And well, that got <laughs> pushed back because, um, right now that got pushed back because <laughs> right now we're going to eat them so one thing i like about the color right system is that they do come with a color mixing guide so for which i think is pretty handy for a lot of different colors and a lot of different hues um so i think that this like for the pale blue which I honestly don't know how much I would do of a pale blue. I have a feeling I want to go more saturated, but I think that mixing this proportion of two base black to one base blue is a good starting point. So let's do six. One, four, five, six. Six base black. And three, three base blue. Here 
is my spoon. So the base blue on its own is sort of like a more neon-y blue. And actually, this, what did I do, nine drops? I'm like, let's start like not going too pigmented. Actually, here, I'll show you guys. Here's a better sense of what that color is like in terms of a blue. I don't want to waste it yet. This is just really, really, really pigmented. This might do well for that darker blue that we want. And with breaking, that'll give us some of those other hues that we want too, which could be pretty nice. Okay, let's, for comparison, let's do some navy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, just for comparison, and so I'm gonna rinse off the spoon. So this is Americolor Navy, and it is the same number of drops in here that I did there. It's just with Americolor versus with, um, versus with the Wilton Colorite. And so here is the Americolor Navy. And here is that blue and black mixture. They are very similar. It's unclear to me. Okay, so here's the Navy. I Yeah, it's, they're very, very similar. But, okay, so that's our navy, and then this is our blue and black. So the blue and black is a bit dustier. The, the navy um, is unique because it has some blue number two in it, which is not something that you find around as much anymore. Um, and so it just sort of is going to bring a different kind of hue to it. Uh, what other colors did I want? I wanted... Uh, what am I going to mix with? I want a bit of some copper color. So I'm going to go into what we copper. Because that color seems to do what I want. And now you can kind of tell from the opacity in here that, and I should have done it with warm water, um, so that way the, the icing, these icing colors will dissolve, but warm water works a little bit better. Um, and just like from wiping my hands, that little pop of rust is nice. Um, but, I mean, let's grab the droplet. It's, it's not very pigmented, uh, so we'll, we'll see um, how that goes. And, oh, I needed a purple. Let's try nine drops of this eggplant color. One, or maybe not. Two, <laughs> these aren't really drops, these are like three, four, okay, we'll do that much of eggplant because, well, <laughs> those, those drops are, are huge. But so food coloring in the U.S. has five main components, um, but there's really six that are molecules that are approved for food. Uh, blue number one, and the sixth is blue number two. And there's yellow five, yellow six, and then red three and red 40. And these different colors absorb to yarn at different rates, which means that you can see something called breaking. And so there is that um, eggplant color. And you can see maybe right here, when I put it on the paper towel, 
you see, well, now it's looking really, really red in the center, but it broke and we've got that blue halo around the outside. <clears throat> One thing we can do to try to minimize color breaking to get more of the colors as we're mixing them versus the, the parts that they're separating into is to use more acid in our dye bath. Oh, and what about that color? Uh, there, now we've got a pastel blue. <laughs> okay, let's set all these aside and hopefully not dye my countertop. And of course, the way I have them, I don't know, I no longer know which color was which. Um, but we're going to go for a little bit of randomness today. If you're just tuning in, we are using food coloring and a wool-based yarn today. Um, in general, I would be okay doing this in the same pot that I used to make tortellini last night, but I am using dedicated dye equipment because like, I love this catering steam pan, which I should also have an affiliate link to in the video description. I like it because you can spread out yarn so much while still applying the heat that you want. Uh, I'll get this there. that. And so far, I've only pre soaked 300 grams of stroll. But, and nitpick stroll is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. I think that this is sort of just an initial colorway to see what we want to see. I'm going to add, gosh, that's four. I'm actually going to add eight cups of water. It's not going to be low immersion, but it will be like medium-ish immersion. Uh, I get questions about immersion and like what different terms sometimes. So immersion dyeing is when you're dyeing yarn that is fully immersed in water versus um, say hand painting, which is where you have your damp yarn maybe on a counter and you apply the, yarn, the dye directly to the damp yarn and then steam set it. So that's the big difference there. Low immersion is when you have a very little water in the pan. So even as things are heating up, so even as things heat up, you the dyes can't move very far because if there's not very much water, when the dye hits the yarn, it can't really spread very far. And right now we only have 100 grams of yarn in here and I need some acid, I need some vinegar. Another question I get, whoa, another question I get a lot is why I use vinegar instead of citric acid. And mainly it's because that's what I've always used. Uh, I think if maybe I started out using citric acid, that might be what I use instead. Uh, but, you know, I use what I'm comfortable with. Okay, so normally, if I want to dip dye to break food coloring, I'd start with one tablespoon of white vinegar and eight cups of water, and then increase that as to two. Because at about one tablespoon, the reds will strike, the blues won't strike very fast yet. But today, I'm going to do three tablespoons of white vinegar. And this might help things break less by having more acid. I do have a video where I looked at vinegar versus citric acid using the same volume, uh, playing around with that, and then trying to break Wilton's violet. And you can see how things vary and how when there was a ton of acid in there, the violet didn't really break. And I have a video coming up where I was trying to replicate something on, like I was trying to do a certain technique I had done before on different types of yarn bases. Sorry about the dog. And, hey, Indy. Anyway, the violet didn't break the way I thought it would. And I now think it's a pH reason. I don't know 
total of three tablespoons in eight cups of water is going to be enough for me to not, I'm sure we'll still see breaking in here, but uh, it's gonna minimize it. So I am on my stove and I've got a burner here and a burner here. It's a gas stove, which I really like, uh, but I mean, you can probably use this on um, electric stove as well. These like hotel, these stainless steel pans aren't intended to use on the stove tub like this. Usually you would use them in like a, a dive and like a water bath to keep food warm. Um, but I've been using this pan. I have two of them. I've been using the same ones for a long time and thus far none have failed. So I'm not going to sit back down and look at the chat. And yet you can see <laughs> the sun come in. Okay. Um, Checking out the chat. Oh, good. I'm glad. Um, oh, good question. Does it matter if you use cleaning vinegar or cooking? Possibly only. It depends on like if you can use the cleaning vinegar on stuff that you're then going to use for food. I think that like I, I use food vinegar. Um, in general, I am overly cautious with recommending like what you use in your cooking pots and pans, but I guess it probably doesn't matter, but I use I use the cooking vinegar. Um, you could use apple cider vinegar, sure. Um, I mean, you could use lemon juice. It's just, you know, white vinegar is cheapest. I'm not sure if the brown hue in apple cider, cider vinegar would add any color to the yarn. It's possible it could, um, but you don't know until you try. It's also possible that if there's some like other molecules in the apple cider vinegar, it could reduce the amount of color that you could absorb in a weird way. Uh, a long time ago, I did a video where I dyed yarn with tea and then I added, this is like ancient, and then I added some food coloring drops and I got this really cool pastel, like something about something made less of the food coloring bind, which was really, really beautiful. I have no idea how it, I've not been able to replicate it. <laughs> I haven't really tried. Maybe I should do a Maybe I should do a video. I've, I've done a video where I recreated my first hand painted colorway. Maybe I should do a video where I recreate my first YouTube videos. <laughs> and not, not like the, the knitting tutorials, but like some of the, the yarn dyeing ones. Um, happy Sunday, everyone. Thank you. I'm, I'm really excited for the Knit Crate collab. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I think, yeah, like the, I don't know. It's, it's exciting to like, it'll be exciting to open the box or I think they might be using bags for the next few months because it's easier for their, um, reduced, it's easier for their reduced warehouse to package. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't know, <laughs> I, um, but yeah, I'm excited to see my name in there. Yes, it's definitely, oh gosh, I have no limit of the different like experiments and what to do. Um, the nice thing is that this heats up pretty fast. Okay, so another question I get is like, oh my gosh, it's boiling. I always show when I accidentally get things too hot and we get to a rolling boil and like it, it's a little bit of boiling as long as you're not, if it's, this is a super wash yarn, but as long as you're not like agitating it, shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't. Um, but, ah, great. This question is perfect. Um, this is just what I was talking about. Um, yes. And I'll, I'll answer that too. Okay. So, um, two questions. One, I'm new to dyes, but, it, but is the water, should it be hot when you put your yarn or cold and then cook slowly? It depends on the technique you're going to do. So for something like this, I added the yarn to a cool dye bath and I'm heating it up. Um, but there are other times when I dip dye yarn that I add cold yarn to a hot dye bath and I have not had a problem doing that. The thing you want to be more careful though, is going from a hot dye bath to like ice cold water. That'll shock the fibers and that can cause felting. When you get the yarn hot, the fibers sort of like open up a bit and relax. And I mean, I don't know if that's part of like what helps the dye come in. I mean, the, I'm not going to go into that. 
But the, um, nope, that's not what I wanted to move. Um, sorry. Uh, but the, but if you cool it too fast and those fibers that are sort of like the last little open shrink sort of close up too fast, they can get disordered, which is felting. Um, so you always want to let your yarn cool completely before you like, before you like wash it and stuff. I find that the washing step is the step where there is the most danger for felting because as you rinse and maybe squeeze to wring out the yarn, that's agitation. And so that's a problem. And I don't know if this could be my grocery delivery, which might mean uh, I have to interrupt to add things to the fridge. So excuse me real quick. Or actually just a minute. Um, um, so can I, can I tell you another question? Can you tell me how kettle dyeing is different from immersion dyeing? Uh, kettle dyeing and immersion dyeing are the same. But typically if someone's talking about kettle dyeing, you're usually referring to a high immersion, a full immersion, a larger volume of water. Um, at least in the way that I use it, if that makes sense. I'm sorry about that. I will be right back. Yep, I, here, I'll reduce the heat um, and I'll be right back. Oh, dog. Okay, that is my grocery delivery, but it's not quite all <laughs> there yet. So uh, <laughs> that's why the dog is freaking out. I we were out of milk and I was about to go to the store on Friday and then I was able to get a delivery slot 10 minutes before I left for the store. So that worked out. Um, yes, I hope that that helps. Yeah, feel free to leave questions in the chat. That's sort of what I'm here for. Um, normally right now, you can see we're getting nice and perfectly steamy. Uh, you don't need to get to a full boil. The ideal temperature is around, what is boiling? I forget enough. I'm blinking what it is in Fahrenheit. The, um, the ideal temperature is just below the boil. So sometimes if I don't have the yarn in there yet, I'll bring the dye pot to a full boil and then reduce the heat so it's not quite boiling. And that's the way I'll set it up. So sorry about the dog. Um, I have used walnut extract to dye a yarn. I have a video on the channel with that, but I've not used like whole walnuts myself yet. Um, oh, Indy's in his crate right now, so he doesn't attack the door of the poor delivery person. So you use jacquard acid dyes, put citric acid, and after the process you wash it 100 times and the dye still shows. Uh, how much, I'm so sorry about the marking. Um, how much dye did you use? Um, because if you used, oh, and, and what color? There's some colors that are notorious for bleeding. Um, other colors that uh, sometimes if you use too much, then you can see bleeding. Or um, if your water is, if your rinse water is a little basic, that can cause bleeding as well. But, uh, sorry, I'm going to turn off the audio just for a little bit. I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, Indy stopped barking, but I can't start bringing the groceries in yet because I haven't finished dropping them off. So, sorry, this is one of those, um, this is real life <laughs> now. 
Oh man. But yeah, I I hope that you guys are all doing well. What on earth? Oh, there's like a thing of um like a black pepper thing before that I found. Maybe I'd find that bead for my Paradise Fibers kit, although I'm not in the same room. Um, yes, Indy is an adorable fluff ball. Um, do you guys have any questions while we're waiting for me to uh, bring in the groceries? I'm going to mute myself again. If I can find it. Okay, um, sorry guys, I'm still putting away groceries. <laughs> Just the perishables, I'm gonna leave everything else out. Oh man. Lots of perishables. I'm not even entirely sure what we ended up getting. Like we've been leaving our grocery delivery, like our fresh cart with like fairly full. Oh yay, we have some meat. I 
I do have an Instapot um, that I haven't used yet because I haven't just had time to like deal with recipes, but I'm excited to start. Okay, got the perishables away. My kids will be happy. We have milk again. I wash hands and I'll check to see if there's any questions. All right, thank you guys for being so patient. That is, uh, we're gonna get back to our regularly scheduled programming in just a sec. Um, Easter dyes, oh, I have a lot of new Easter dyes. Um, uh, what do I recommend for um, trying first for someone who's never done this before? I recommend doing some kettle dyeing with food coloring or Kool-Aid. So set up, eight to 10 cups of water with either like a couple packets of Kool-Aid or one to two tablespoons of white vinegar. Add your yarn to it when it's all cool with the dye, sort of gently mix things up so, so the dye can penetrate and then heat for 20 minutes or until the dye is exhausted. Um, I think that that is, that's sort of how I started <laughs> back in the day. Um, I'm probably missed some questions, but pressure look on YouTube. Okay, I am going to start dyeing now. And by dyeing, I mean dyeing yarn. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, that, that gets me every time. I think I want, huh, let's use a turkey baster today. I mean, this is a dedicated dye turkey baster. But when it comes to applying dye to your yarn, and maybe let's start with, start with that bit of rust to see how pigmented because we're going to go over it a bit and like we'll flip so there's only one skein of yarn in here right now um that's not bad don't mind some little bits around since there's only one skein of yarn in here at the moment um when we're going to get pretty good color penetration all the way through where are my Tongs are in the garage. Oh gosh, okay. Um, but you can see like we're getting reasonable color penetration and now it's spreading because I moved it. But where is our, is this my pastel? Yes, I think this is my pastel color. And so I like this because I can squirt up a lot at a time. And you can see, even if the blue is going over the orange, that's very blueberry. Um, that's why I sort of did some of this orange first. And then this is the more like that pastel, I think, that I mixed, um, which I prefer sometimes if I'm mixing colors to mix them more concentrated than I think I might want. Um, because then it's a lot easier to dilute things. Um, this, I think, is the eggplant purple. Ooh, that's pretty. And I'm really, let's see what happens if this goes over that orange a bit. So this is sort of like our base. And then I'm gonna go in heavier with these deeper blues. Now, one thing I'm gonna say, I am not seeing breaking right now, which is maybe means we had enough acid. I started off with eight cups of water and three tablespoons of white vinegar to help reduce some of that breaking. Now this, I wonder which, which blue this is. This one feels a little bright. I mean, I'm not mad at it. I do wish it were more navy. I'm not done. I want more color. We're just, we're layering. Um, okay, what's this one? Okay, here is more navy, but I think that this is actually our um, base 
blue and base black. I think that the actual navy from Americolor gave us um, like more blue. So today is a day where like I don't necessarily want a lot of white. I don't want to go too intense with the colors, but I'm sort of doing this first layer and then we'll move it and add more color. But this is just me sort of painting and I am coming in because there are some paler blues in with all of this. Um, I don't want white. Uh, if I'm going to have pastel, I'd rather it be like pastel blue. So I am helping, helping it along. I know sometimes people don't like it when I touch the yarn. And I'm going to come in with a little more of the purple as well. And in some places I'm doing lines, in some places just little dots. I like to let the colors speak to me sometimes. And I know that the orange probably feels a little weird. Um, but I kind of like that little hint. Maybe, maybe what I would do if I go and I do this on, I wanted to do 300 grams, but if I do like another pan, maybe instead of doing the lines, I would do more of the dots, but I like it layered with the blue. And what I'm going to do now, because sometimes the colors don't come through perfectly, um, is I'm going to upload a status to my Instagram. So that way you can see um, a little bit more what I see. I know my webcam is not perfect. Okay, I've just uploaded that to my stories. So, I think at least. But actually, it's not doing so bad. The purples are definitely not coming through. Um, I'm going to bring my face back up. Yeah, the purples aren't showing up on there. And this isn't like the, what was it, the December one, where like the purples ended up not showing up on the finished yarn. The purples were there. <laughs> but they, they are in there this time. So, let's see. Um, do you keep the heat on when adding the dye? Yes. Um, the, my heat is on low right now. Um, you don't have to. I could heat it up, move the pan somewhere else and add the dye. And with some dyes, the heat from the slowly cooling pan might be enough for the colors to set. But some other colors, or if you have a lot of pigment, might require more, if that makes sense. Um, has anyone used, I have not used the stamens of lilies to dye. I definitely know they stain. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if they dissolve. Um, so I, I don't know, but it's worth a try. Uh, oh, I'm so glad I, my, my joy is to make things understandable. Um, yes, it, it does, except the colors are more intense. So last February I used sort of a, or a year ago, February for the aquarium yarn, I used some pastel blues, I use some mint and some coral colors. Uh, but yeah, um, and so I, oh, I suppose that this is the time when I would say, um, make sure you guys are subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. Uh, that is honestly the biggest way that you guys can support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, subscribing, liking, commenting, engaging with the videos. Uh, if you would like to support the channel on another level, there are a few ways you can do that. One way is through the super chat. It's a little dollar sign at the bottom of that chat window. That is a way that you can sort of like a tip jar contribute uh, to the content that I create here. You can also, um, I have a Patreon and there will be a link to it in the, um, there should be a link to it in the video description. Uh, I also have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, where the yarn that I dye in these videos all ends up over there and I do try to tag the yarn from the dialogues, dialogues chem with Chemnitz dialogues so that way you can easily search and find the yarn there. Um, but yeah, I definitely want more color in here. Um, so let me 
thinking? I don't know. I lost the chat. <laughs> uh, I think I think I'm gonna take a brief break while I'm gonna take a brief break. Um, go get something to drink uh, while we're waiting for this to set. Um, so I am gonna insert an ad right here, which is another way that I help support all of this. Um, but yes, so please hang tight and I will be right back. And uh, when, yeah, I'll come back in just a couple minutes. And then this is always the awkward part and you'll get to see how much of a delay there is uh, because now I'm chatting, waiting for me to say I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, not everyone might see an ad. Um, so yeah. Oh, actually the delay isn't so bad today, I don't think. If I wait for my head to disappear and then I can press the button and then I go get a beverage. And put my foot away. Okay. I'm curious. Uh, it's actually not bad. It is actually looking a lot like a frame. It's a similar technique. I'm going to go get my tongs from the garage. That's the other thing I'm going to do. My blue silicone tongs are dying and not like in the fun way. They are um, like it's coming off at the end and it's making me really, really sad. Um, ooh. So that's an interesting question. Would I do a PDF booklet of my ideas and sell via Ravelry? I'm not sure if that's something I would be allowed to sell on Ravelry because it's not uh, a knitting pattern. But I mean, I'd love to write a book. <laughs> I'd love to write a book. But yeah, I I don't know. Um, if <laughs> I I think that the like the the formatting and I'd love I'd love 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 to, to have a book. Um, but yeah, I need to uh, pitch an idea to some companies or something who maybe could help me with the, um, like may help me make it look good and stuff like that. Uh, but if you want sort of like a uh, handy, not cheap, but a handy like way to figure out more about the conditions from some of my videos, I typically annotate the video description with timestamps to take you to the right spot. And I try to, include information like the amount of dye and the amount of acid that at least <laughs> at least the starting amount of acid I try to include all of that in the video descriptions and now it looks like YouTube is actually taking that and you can also you can see sort of the titles of some of those annotated steps like on the slide bar which is kind of cool but I do try to include that in there I know it's not the same as a written tutorial but uh, I'd love to at some point is the long way of saying. Um, ooh, Barbara, I'm really, really sorry. I think that that's definitely my fault. I am not good with uh, volume modulation. Uh, if I'm far, so the mic is not, it, the mic is up here above the stove. And so I definitely go louder and maybe too loud when I'm not near it. And so I'm very sorry about that. Uh, The sound is good here. Okay. Um, are you, am I going to do pops of purples in there? Yes. Um, there are, I just added a picture to my Instagram stories. Um, 
And so there are, this is good. You almost can, see, no, maybe not. I'm like, can you see on the phone? Yeah, uh, maybe now you can kind of see some of the purple. Those darker, a lot of those darker patches are more purple. It's just not, my webcam is really bad at picking up purples, unfortunately. Um, all right. I set a timer for 10 minutes, but that was just mainly to make sure I wouldn't forget. <laughs> oh, I guess it was almost time. Uh, but I'm going to move it. For a second, I was like, did I not have a reusable nylon zip tie? <gasps> I'm like, is my name not Rebecca? <laughs> it basically all absorbed, but I'm flipping it over. You can see patches um, over here now, and especially around where the ties are that had less color. And so we're going to need more. And I want to pump up the volume with all of this as well. I feel like a lot of times I want to go big and then it doesn't end up being as big. Um, okay, so this is some eggplant purple that I'm putting on directly right now. Um, and there's a, there's a fair amount of it. And on camera, I don't think you guys can tell that it's purple. Yeah, on camera to me, it's looking navy, but I promise it's purple. Um, what color is this one? This is the navy that I mixed from Color Right, so that I can mix more of. Um, so what's funny is like, there's a color that looks navy that was made from black and blue. And there's a color that is called navy that is much more of a bright blue. Um, so I think that that is pretty funny. Um, but we're layering, and by layering and letting colors set, that'll give us some variation in here, which I hope will feel like blueberries. Um, and we might see some of those rust pops disappear almost completely. And yeah. <laughs> so, actually, speaking of our rusty friend, I thought adding it first would help, but actually adding it second is kind of nice. I think it's a nice contrast. One of the things that gave me the idea to do this, um, this particular project and this particular kind of colorway is from, there was an injecting dye into a yarn cake video where I accidentally ended up with some rust orange in there. And it was so beautiful that I sort of, when I saw those little itty bitty pricks of rust in the blueberries, I got really excited. Oh my gosh, I didn't even put, I was like, I can't see, it is dark. The lights aren't even on in the kitchen. Rebecca, oh my gosh. Not that that helps the purples come through, but, oh goodness. Uh, let me bring my, actually first, before I bring my face back up, um, so that way you can see like in, I think that because I pulled and I picked that rust tone out of the picture, but if you look above like the, there's the palest blue on the colors. If you go straight up in the center of a blueberry up there is that little bit of rust, rust color. And that is something that excited me. And so this brings me to like another thing um, that, like you don't have to, use, when doing your project, you don't have to use all of the colors that are in there. You don't have to do that. And you don't even have to use all of them in the proportions. Like you could pump up the volume of that rust and do more of the rust than the blue and sort of play off of that. Uh, but I would love to hear if you guys like me including colors that I've picked in with the image or if you prefer to not have that. I mean, I think that on one hand, having the colors pulled can sort of bias the way you're thinking about it. But on the other hand, I think that it helps if, like, I know it helps me. So um, 
let's see. Ah, uh, yes. So if you want really good, really good speckles, uh, my preference for speckling is to use dry powder. Um, that's one of my favorite ways to do it. And uh, for really sharp speckles, I like to mix the dye powder in with some citric acid powder. Um, that additional acid, it's sort of like making your own like Kool-Aid, but out of the like acid dyes. Um, that extra citric acid powder uh, will help the color strike fast, but it also helps dilute the dye so you can spread it apart more. Um, but you can also achieve really sharp speckles with a really fine hand without diluting the dye. I think in Dye Pot Weekly 193, I did some light speckles on a self striking yarn, and there I didn't have any citric acid involved. I just used a very, very light hand. I pinched the dye and had barely, oh, that would have been too much, barely moved my fingers to release it. Um, but different people with speckling have different preferences. So, for example, I prefer to use my hands, gloved hands, but I like to use my fingers. Um, I, I prefer that over like a dusting wand or a salt shaker and things like that. I feel like it gives me more control um, because when I've tried the salt shaker, and again, I haven't tried salt shakers as much, right? So when I tried the salt shaker, things like ducked and uh, like a clump and I didn't like that, so. You think that the added colors add to the inspiration, oh awesome. Um, your kids um, are just starting dying for like thanks for my inspiration. Oh, that's awesome! Thank you so so much. I mean, I love, I love what I do. I love that like I can do this on YouTube and therefore like have my content not behind a paywall. Um, I think I would feel more pressure if I was doing something for like Blueprint or something like that. And so I don't know. I like YouTube and like there is like there's some ad revenue from it and you guys are also generous and support the channel through like my Etsy shop and the Patreon and stuff and with uh yeah and when you guys shop the things that I'm using it's sort of nice like I know like affiliate links can kind of probably be a bit of a pain but it's really handy when like I'm genuinely using these items anyway and so I can be like hey these are the exact items that I'm using um and what, would there be interest in like, yeah, if there's other items that I use that you guys want me to link to, uh, let me know and I can include more. I do have, I've been so bad at updating the blog. That's how I started, but then um, I started putting a lot more of the energy into, oh gosh, the last post was probably like November. Um, but I do have a blog post on my favorite tools and equipment for dyeing yarn at home. I will drop that into the chat. I should have that linked in most of my video descriptions these days anyway. Um, I mean, a pepper shaker could be fine for a lot of people. I just know I prefer, um, I my preferences are, are different. Okay, I'm gonna stand back up to our dye pan. Um, all right, okay, I am liking this. I want more color. I always worry. Okay, I'm really liking how this is going. Definitely need more color and I'm gonna have to move things. But I know I'm going to, I can kind of tell, this is looking like a ton of color, but I also know I'm gonna look at this in a little bit and be like, I wish there was more. So, But I thought I'd mixed up enough color for like 300 grams. <laughs> uh, but one thing you can do is if you're worried about white patches is like I just added some dye there. And there's no harm with low immersion in moving things around to help that dye penetrate to areas where you want it to. Um, a lot of times I do try to not move things. But... There's also no harm in moving things. This is really, really pretty. I wish, hmm, okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this. So there's still a fair amount of color in here, but I'm adding the water and now 
when I put it on, you can barely see it probably. But this is allowing me to spread it a bit more and sort of share that love. So I still have rust and purple left, but I am now officially out of those two blues that I mixed, um, which means that I am going to mix more, but I think that I'm feeling pretty close to done with this colorway. I mean, obviously, do I need, how is that? Is that too much white? I mean, there are, there is some paleness in there. So I think that if there's anything I think is too light, I can add a little bit of our eggplant. Oh no, and not, I just squirted it all over the stove. So I, that's where you like, whoops. And I'm gonna want some in here. Around the ties is where you want to pay the most careful attention. And if you don't have a turkey baster like this, I think I get, I buy these at like the dollar store and stuff. Um, you can get, um, you can use large syringes, you can pour, use squeeze bottles. Okay, I think I actually really like this. I think I'm gonna wish Again, I'm probably gonna wish that everything was more saturated here, but this is also just beautiful. And so now I know I want to pump up the volume, which means I'm going to make more volume. So in here, let's do, Where is the cups marker? Okay, in here, I have, I'm going to mix up more dye. Okay. And unfortunately, you guys probably aren't going to be able to see this. So in here this time, I've got two cups of water versus a half a cup of water. And so it was two to one black to blue. So last time I did six and three. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, one. That's 12. 18, 24, and then 12 drops of blue. And that is giving me four times as much of this navy color. I'm not mixing a lot more of the purple. I will if it's needed. But I do want to go ahead and do more of the brighter blue that I had. And this time I'm going to do about one cup of water. and 18 drops of the Americolor Navy. If I have 18 drops left. One, but two, three, four. Approximately, this color is probably close to tapped out. Um, I think in terms of Americolor, I would be happy to order some more of that color. Like, I wouldn't mind that. And then, I want some 
pale blue. It's a dusty blue. I'm actually going to grab and find a thing. I'm going to get some delphinium blue rather than just oh dear, diluting what I had before. So I have covered like a knife back with some delphinium blue, which the delphinium blue is a bit greener. Um, it has some red and some yellow in it. And so I'm now just stirring it up. And again, if I'd started with hot water, probably have around three quarters of a cup of water in here. If I started with hotter water, that probably would have helped. So I'm just going to leave that to sit. Um, wash off my gloves. And I am about ready to set this guy aside. Now, we talked about how, and I'm going to reduce the heat again. We talked about colors breaking today and how like since I use a little more acid than normally I do, that helps to minimize the breaking. Since we want the color to be all over blue and that's the direction that breaking typically goes, it's hard to say if we actually got breaking in here or not. But one place, and I'm gonna be careful, where we will notice breaking is around the edge. There's some crocking. I'm not sure if you guys can see. Um, but there's definitely some pink color in there around the edge and that's from some red number three if any of those colors having it that will crash out of solution and honestly it's a bit of a pain in the chocolate but i am going to now grab this skein I like that rust in there. It might feel like a mistake, but I'm happy. We'll see if I can go even darker, but I do want to add more water to the pot because I like the colors being able to move a little bit freely. And I have to say guys, I miss dying live like this. I wish that I could go longer. Uh-oh, error. I hope that it's still working. Um, and I'll come and check the chat in a second. I wish that, like, I'm having so much fun that I was like, oh man, I need to go start pre-soaking even more yarn but I'm also realizing that I probably have a hard stop um, at some point because my family is going to want to be able to come downstairs. So, <laughs> uh, but normally, if today were like a school day or something, I would just keep going. Um, actually, I think that if today were a school day, what I would do is... Um, dye more yarn with this food coloring and then honestly i would transition to acid dyes and do a version of this um, i think probably just using dye powder um, so we'll see how long this next colorway takes uh, i'm not going to pre-soak anything right now but we can always do that and i'm going to put in 200 grams of yarn this time this is still Knit pick stroll fingering weight yarn. Um, I added more cool water so it's not hot yet. The yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Uh, and yeah, I'm excited. So, with our original colorway, we started with eight cups of water, three tablespoons of vinegar. I added, there was still some water left in here, a lot of volume had evaporated. I added eight more cups of water and three more tablespoons of white vinegar to help, um, yeah, just to give us like, this is like a full immersion. Like you can, like there's, there's yarn beneath the surface, but that's gonna allow some spread. 
They give us some watercolory variation and things like that. But now I'm gonna sit down and let you see my my little face. Um, let's see. Okay, so I see Rebecca. I bought a few steam pans a few weeks ago. I haven't used them yet because you're still intimidated about dyeing yarn. Um, yes, with Easter egg dye tablets, go for it. The note for Easter egg dye tablets is to peek at one of my more recent Easter egg videos versus the older ones. Um, if you don't want the colors to spread too far, you want to use a lot of acid um, because my very first videos with Easter egg dye tablets, the tablets had citric acid in them in addition to sodium bicarbonate. And the more recent ones don't have any citric acid at all. And so therefore the, they raise the pH around the tablets, which is part of what allows them to spread because it raises that local pH and it's really cool. But you also want like, yeah, if you, if you don't want everything to blend together, which can also be beautiful, then you might want um, more acid. So will the yarn smell vinegary? Um, right now, yes, but by the time the yarn is dry, I don't smell vinegar usually. The only time I usually like notice a vinegar smell on my yarn is if I did a yarn cake when I unraveled it and I had need to wash it because I couldn't really wash it while it's still in the cake. But otherwise, the vinegar smell typically is gone. And I have a pretty sensitive nose. It's possible I don't notice it. So if you've bought yarn from me, let me know if it smells like vinegar, please. <laughs> Uh, but I have noticed like at Vogue knitting and stuff like going and looking at other people's yarn back in the day that um, some of them do smell a bit like vinegar still. So I think it just depends on the rinse and the dyer. Uh, if I miss questions, please feel free to re-ask. Um, uh, uh, some Mad Tosh, some of it smelled like strong vinegar. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends, honestly, it depends on the colorway, it depends on the dyer, it depends on the brand, um, and yeah, and the process, I suppose. Um, uh, wait, I see. What, why does red number three always crash? It's because it's not, it's no, if conditions are too acidic, it's not soluble anymore. This is why if you look at Kool-Aid, none of them have red three in them. They're all with red 40. And if you go and shop through like the beverage aisle and look at um, Gatorade and other things, red three isn't usually in there. I think it's mostly used for icing, mixing and colors where things are pretty much a solid or like more like a paste or solid and aren't super acidic. So yeah. Um, How do I know that I'm not destroying my yarn? You used 100% wool, and after it dried, it seems like it shrinked. Um, how to tell if the yarn is healthy? Can you still see the plies? So the it's hard to know. It's easy to know once the yarn is felted. Then you're like, oh, I can't untwist and see the individual plies anymore. That's felted. Uh, lightly felted might be, okay, it's a little fuzzier. But if you still see the individual plies, if you can still separate the plies, then I don't consider it felted. Um, and so a lot of yarn might shrink in the sense that like with the washing, it might get fuller. And by fuller, I don't mean like felted, it means it might plump up more. So instead of the length, it might be like a little more round is something that I've observed with, with some yarn. Um, this yarn was just pre-soaked in plain tap water and got to turn up the heat. Uh, some dyers do an extra vinegar rinse if they're having a hard time with bleeding. Yes. Um, and so I think it depends, like, it depends on the dye. I'm sure that I have some skeins that smell more like vinegar than others. Um, but in general, I find that, like, my studio room doesn't smell like vinegar. <laughs> and usually the, um, uh, my, like where I dry my yarn doesn't usually smell like vinegar to me either. Um, for your very first dye experiment, used white cotton, sugar, and cream, and red dye when fuchsia and teal. Um, you haven't messed with it after you washed and dried it. Ah, uh, yeah. So, writ dyes and cotton, dyeing cotton. I like cotton yarn and I enjoy doing cotton yarn dyeing videos. I hate rinsing cotton yarn. I hate it. 
there is just so, so much washing and rinsing that needs to happen. And if you consider like a tie-dye t-shirt, like I usually wash it three or four times through my washing machine, you know? And so it's just when you're trying to like rinse it by hand, it's just like, oh man. Um, can you use disposable pans for dyeing? Maybe. Uh, so I put like, I put the yarn into an, I guess my stand up because it's not that small. I use like disposable aluminum pans to hold the yarn that's still hot. I put it in there as it's cooling and sometimes like I stack them just to keep things separate. Uh, I uh, either, I used to get them at the dollar store, but I just picked up a bunch from Costco. Um, so because like eventually they get holes in them. I would not be comfortable putting that aluminum pan directly on the flames of my stove. I would worry about, like I find that these get holes in them really easily. Now, would I put one of those inside this catering steam pan and heat it up as like a double boiler situation? Yeah. Of course, aluminum could affect some of the chemistry. So yeah, maybe. <laughs> Approximately how long should the yarn boil in the pan? It depends on the dye. Uh, oftentimes I will leave yarn in a kettle from anywhere from 15 to like hours. So it, it depends on the dye and how much color is left in there. Um, I'm glad you made it too. Uh, all right, I am, well, we're not bubbling it. I'm cranking the heat. Uh, oh man, okay, what else I can say? Uh, the, oh, maybe I'll drop in my, uh, nope. Um, what is the benefit of pre-soaking in water and vinegar versus just water? Ah, that is a good question. Uh, so it depends on the technique that you want to do. If you pre-soak the yarn in vinegar, the, the dye will strike faster. So if I am kettle dyeing and I have vinegar in my dye pot, or maybe I don't have vinegar in my dye pot, and the yarn was pre-soaked in vinegar, the color will start striking to it a little faster than if the yarn was just pre-soaked in water. Uh, if I normally don't bother adding acid to my pre-soak unless I'm gonna do hand painting or do some, if I'm gonna apply dye to the yarn in some kind of way and then steam set it. So if I don't have any acid in the dye that I'm using, that's when I add vinegar to the pre-soak. But in general, I will pre-soak in plain tap water and then add vinegar like 10 minutes before I'm gonna dye the yarn. So um, I hope that that helps. And I love all these questions. Uh, this is the best part of dyeing yarn live <laughs> is that I can share all this. So yes, if it is Sunday morning still, you are watching me live right now. Um, the Chemnitz Dialogue is a series where every month around the 15th, I share a new inspiration photo and invite all of you to dye yarn along with me at home. And I'm trying to grab the picture and make it bigger. Uh, for April, we are inspired by this handful of blueberries and all of these different tones that you see in here. I pulled some that are at the bottom of this photo. If you want to dye along with me, you don't have to do the same technique that I'm doing, although you're welcome to try to replicate my results. I invite you to copy me. Uh, but I want to see what you create. And so if you want your color to be featured in the uh, recap that will come out sometime mid-May, uh, share your pictures with the hashtag Chemnitz Dye Along and tell us a little bit about the dye process. Or you can share your yarn that you dyed inspired by this project um, in, there's like this picture on Facebook, you can reply to that with a photo comment. I do have a group for fans of Chemnitz, it's called Chemnitz Lab. Uh, you can share your projects in there as well, but by group policies, everything in there is kept private, so I don't um, I won't ever share anything that was shared in the group unless like we have an explicit conversation about it. Um, so if you want to share more anonymously, that's a way to do it as well. So I hope all of that helps. And uh, I am checking and like maybe twice a week I go through and add new members to the lab group. Please make sure you answer the membership question. It basically, it, the first question is like, like what fiber arts do you like? If you just say knitting or you say yarn, that's enough. <laughs> it's really just to keep out people who might accidentally press it by accident. Um, so that is like, um, yeah, that's the little request from me to all of you. 
And right now the group is only open for in for individual Facebook pages, so like personal pages or personal accounts, not business pages. So if your brand or something requests or it's a page versus a profile that requests, um, right now I'm not letting pages join, except for Chemnitz because it's my lab group. So I think that makes sense. Um, so if, if you requested as your business page to join and I denied you, please come join as your personal page. Um, so, um, so you ordered dye kit from Dharma and then like, so you like true black, silver gray and purple pop. Um, those are three colors I love from Dharma. Um, let me actually grab, let me grab my uh, catalog. Let's see other colors I use a lot. Um, I like, uh, Sapphire blue and peacock blue um, for like a primary. I love um, cherry bomb as a red. That's one of my favorites. Fire engine red is also pretty good. Brilliant yellow is like my basic yellow that I use from Dharma. Uh, I use teal green, dark navy a lot. Um, I love intense iris. Uh, I also love um, Saffron Spice and Tangelo are two other colors I really like. Um, but if you want, okay, you're not going to be able to see that. <laughs> I was like, here are all the colors that I have. I put little ticks on them. So, um, let's see. If you made a 3 gram, 300 mil solution, how do I know how much milk to use to dye yarn? For example, four cups of water in a solid color. Okay, this is another good question. So when you have your dye in solution, so say you make a 1% dye stock, which means you have one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. Um, how much dye do you add? And I actually recommend Dye Pot Weekly 117, which is the math of yarn dyeing. There's actually two videos for that. And I go through a lot of the calculations in detail. But a good starting place for acid dyes is to do one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. Uh, and so the volume doesn't necessarily matter, but if you're dealing with a 1% stock solution, that would be 100 milliliters. Uh, so, but to apply it to the dye, you could just add that as those 100 milliliters, or you could add the 100 milliliters to more water, to say four cups of water, and deal with that. But it doesn't matter if you do four cups of water or 32 cups of water. If you're going to die to exhaustion, all of that will end up in your yarn eventually. It's just how solid or even the color is makes a difference with the water volume. But when you're adding the dye, it matters how much dye you want to add. Now, most uh, commercial dye brands do recommend a depth of shade or an on weight of goods, the amount of dye you should use to achieve the advertised color. So for um, a, a lot of colors, the standard is about 1%, but for deeper colors like navy or black, they might recommend 4%. So 4 grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. So I hope that helps. Okay, I'm going to stand up and we're going to start dyeing yarn. And I am feeling a little giddy and excited. So I will, I, I want to add that uh, when I'm doing purples right now, the purples are not going to show up very well. Um, and unfortunately, that's because of my webcam. They will show up in the final yarn. So on this one that we dyed first, I look at it and I'm like, ooh, I see the purple and those pops of rust and a lot of like blues. I'll see, but I'm going to start with some of the purple um, so you guys can see. And actually, <laughs> we've got a little bit of pink from the edge bleeding onto the yarn. We're going to be covering it up so I'm not worried and I'm going to reduce the heat more. Uh, with, if I was doing dye powder, I would tr reduce the temperature more because dyeing powder with the steam is annoying. Um, but just for like the sake of showing you guys this color right here, I don't know what it looks like to you on camera, but it is an eggplant purple. Um, Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, so that is very purple. The only color in here right now is purple and it looks kind of black on camera. 
Um, I'm, I'm excited for May's Knit Crate too. If you're just tuning in, I'm going to be featured in the crate and so it's excited. Um, Oh, Sarah, uh, I may have misspoken. So um, a 4% on weighted goods is 4 grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. Um, I'm glad you guys caught me too. All right, let's do, where's my galphinium? Today we're using food coloring, and this still hasn't all dissolved, which is okay. Uh, there's probably around 12 cups of water or so in here right now. Uh, today we're using a proportion of um, three tablespoons of vinegar per eight cups of water, which is enough that the colors are gonna strike faster. And I'm curious with this delphinium blue, it's hard to say if breaking is happening. Actually though, with that eggplant purple, that is a color that on a paper towel, you could see the breaking. Let me, um, is the purple on here from before? Yeah, okay, so I think this color right there, that was the eggplant purple, which the breaking was extreme on the paper towel. With slightly more acid, we're minimizing the breaking. Um, now, if I was dip dyeing, you would probably see it, but it is reduced, which, is pretty nice. So the Delphinium Blue with the higher acid is actually doing a really nice job of being sort of like a nice dusty blue base. I'm going to add more water because there's still some dye that didn't dissolve. And I want to check. I'm cheating. Let me check the penetration. Okay, it's going through a tiny bit, but I'm gonna want to take care because I do want good color penetration. So therefore, um, we're gonna need to like leave color for the other side. Actually, let's do another pastel color. I took the, okay, so this is where things are gonna feel funny. We've got three blues. We've got the delphinium blue, we've got navy blue, which this was the navy blue, which is more of a bright blue. And then we've got uh, like the blue and black from Color Right, which is actually a navy blue. Um, <laughs> so I know that that's going to be like a little confusing. Um, so here is, this is Americolor navy, um, which is unique because it has some blue number two in it. Uh, but now we're getting into the more pigmented colors and you can see we're getting a little more halo and spread here. So where is my spoon? Here's my spoon. Um, and I'm actually coming in and helping it along. I don't mind, we're gonna add so much more color to this. I don't mind if we have some uh, pastel patches in the end, but I want, I don't want white today. Okay, so this is our two to one mixture of, this is the Wilton Color Right uh, blue and black. So there's two drops of the Color White base black for every drop of the blue. And this color looks much more navy uh, than the actual navy does, which is, could be a matter of proportion. But in hue, this blue is much more of a dusty blue, probably because there's yellows and stuff from the Colorite colors. And the one thing that I have not done right now, and I actually want to put you down and use some liquid to clean it off is our pops of, whoop, that's more than a pop, but I'm doing some pops of rust, which I am actually really excited about. It might feel 
like when you look at it that it was like a mistake or a rough spot in the pan but i think that it's like that little bit of contrast makes the colorway in really interesting and let me uh i'm gonna snap a picture of this and again post it to my instagram stories um So that way you guys can see what, what I see. And I'm doing a close up. Of course it's very, um, <laughs> very steamy. And Actually, by the time you guys hear me say I've added it to my story, it's probably going to be there. Um, I hope if things go well. And here is a steamy photo and stories. Actually, it would have been fun to do that as because my phone is not doing um, motion stuff. So it would have been cool to add the motion photo, but I can't do that quickly. So now I do want to give this like a minute. Um, you can see we've got lots of blue around, but there is, you know, when I move it and we look, there are, uh, I could probably move it now, but I am gonna come and check and see if there's any questions in the chat um, and let it sit for just a minute. Uh, but we will be moving and adding color and moving and adding color. And that's sort of the name of the game for this watercolory technique. Um, but I'm again, I'm sorry that the purples, the webcam doesn't really pick up those purples really well. Um, for dye powder, you can get a pharmacist scale. Yeah, so I don't use a pharmacist scale. I use a kitchen scale. Um, there's one I probably haven't linked in here in this uh, post that I'm going to put up. Uh, so that is where um, I should, the link, I just dropped the link into chat, um, and that is where you can probably see uh, the scale that I use. I probably linked it in there. You're addicted to Canvas videos, oh, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, I have probably one video with a crock pot. Really, the only difference between using a crock pot or a stove top is where your heat is coming from. Otherwise, everything is pretty similar. So the crock pot is really good at maintaining a temperature that is below a boil. That's really the only main difference from, between a crock pot and having just like a five quart pot on the stove. Um, I do have, I definitely have at least one video using my crock pot, but in general, I don't bother using it because I can heat things up a bit faster on the stove. And so it's just a bit faster in general. Um, but I definitely have a video. Um, If someone else wants to link it for me, that would be awesome. But uh, I think the crock pot I did like froggy inspired yarn and oh, I've got really sad news. Really, really sad news. Uh, after 18 months of living with us, Froggy the fish um, has crossed the rainbow bridge and I'm probably more upset about it than the kids, but it was almost 18 months exactly from when we brought him home. Of course it's Froggy 2, Froggy 1 got water poisoning because our tap water is we got bad advice from the first pet shop um but froggy too it yeah was with us for a good 18 months and yeah but anyway off of froggy one i did the colorway and the crack pot for the yarn so um oh the scale is listed oh good um after boiling as an example for 30 minutes or an hour if I see the color did not absorb, should I put more vinegar or citric acid? Yes. And heat and let it cool down, um, both. Um, add more acid and then let it cool completely. Uh, some colors of acid dyes, like purple pop, needs to, needs to cool completely for it to, uh, to absorb. Um, some other colors, if you're having a lot of bleeding, I might actually go and put it back in a crock pot um, with a lot of acid and bring that to a boil, let it heat for another 15 minutes, and then let it cool completely in the pot. I had some blue that I used for speckling 
And I have no idea what it was, but I needed to do that for it to stop bleeding. And it's weird and I don't understand still what color it was or what was happening. That was the, um, I think the 2019 limited edition colorway for the Summer Mini Skinny Mini Series. Um, if you want to see me deal with that. Um, did I already add? Yes. You can see, so like a little bit across from where my elbow is, you can see one of the, the dots of, of rust right there. I just did some little hints and I'll be adding more as I move it around. Um, yeah. Oh, thank you, Judy. Okay, I'm going to stay back up and we are going to keep dying and yelling. So, and again, a uh, little reminder, subscribe and turn on notifications. Yay! I'm so glad you guys are enjoying this stream. And don't forget to like the video. That all helps a lot. So if you've been watching a while, you might remember that initially I was like, oh no, my tongs are in the um, garage. Well, it is not, well, I'm going to want the tongs now, but one of the reasons why I like these nylon zip ties is that I can flip the yarn without tongs. And so that's nice. And oh good, we are getting some color penetration to the other side, which is great. Um, hello, honey. Okay, boys. This thing like when it's small. Oh, it's okay. We've already dealt with grocery delivery during all this. Um, okay, so there's still some white. There's still some white and pale color in here, but uh, I do definitely want to add more pigment. Oh, that's <laughs> Keith's asking. He saw the like tin foil I have. It's a hood because I was backlit, and so it's like to reduce the light going in. <laughs> Okay, so here's the eggplant, purple color, which I've been trying to do first so that way I can prove to you guys that it is there. And again, around these ties and ends, I do want to pay extra attention. Uh, and I think... Oh, thank you for the kiss, Lucas. Lucas, do you want to, do you want to just say hi, everybody? I'm not sure if you could hear that, but he said, hi, everyone. It's Lucas from Chemnitz. Oh, my little future YouTube star. <laughs> oh, man. But I love, I love this kind of watercolory technique. Um, and again, I'm using this turkey baster. Oh, goody. I still have some dye on here that I can like rinse off and make some more of that pastel. Um, the, the turkey baster is just a really handy way to do it. And one reason why I like it is that if I was, and this is so pastel, I'm going to do it. If I was just pouring, it's harder to get the colors to spread as far as I can using um, like a wand. And this, but this at the same time, it allows me to add more, I think that this is the more dilute, yeah. Um, at the same time, it allows me to do more volume a bit faster than any of the squeeze bottles that I have on hand. So, but in doing this, like it means that you're gonna get a colorway that has these like tiny little shifts in it and it's fun. Before I go with the heavier colors this time, I am gonna add a few of these like hints of rest. So one other thing is when I'm adding a line of color, I am attempting to do it in a particular, in a particular way, which you might have noticed. Um, when I'm adding a line of color, I'm trying to go, and that is so pastel, but I'm trying to go across all the strands, which will mean that these color differences are going to be as tiny as possible. If I added color this way, then we would get a longer patch of color because it's going along the strand. I'm not sure if that's ever anything I've like explicitly talked about. So this is the quote navy that is made out of black and blue. 
This is my mixed navy, I should say. We are getting some good spread in there, which I am happy about. I'm even going to use this spoon. Um, I'm doing this because it's helping uh, spread the color through any patches that could still be white because that's what I don't want. But there is enough acid and heat in here that things are going to start striking at least a bit at, from where they land and where they are placed on here. And this color that I'm coming in with that you maybe can't see as well, this is actually navy from Americolor. And layering it, I'm so glad you can still see those little rust hints through. That's making me really happy. But yeah, it's just a fun other way. So some runners up for the inspiration photo this month were, I really just wanted to play with blue. I don't know what it was that was giving me that like urge. Um, but I just, blues were calling to me. And so there were a lot of like abstract blue pictures. There was even like a, like thing, an organized box of like blue pastel crayons or like chalk or something. And I don't know, I was just really drawn to blue. Now you can, I wish like on camera, the purple and the rust aren't coming through as much, but uh, here, um, this color, when you look at it in person, you see and you can feel those hues, I promise. Um, okay. Let me look at the chat to see if you guys have any questions. Um, can you guys tell I'm really excited to be doing this today? I am feeling so energetic and giddy, and it's not just because I've had red bull, <laughs> although it might be partly because uh, I think in general, like starting streams in the morning is so much easier for me than the evenings. Uh, but anyway, um, let's see. Oh, Amy, thanks for trying to link the video, probably because it won't let you, um, and I don't see a thing in there. It might, I might be the only one with permission to add links. Uh, but yeah. Uh, would I recommend a crock pot for silks? Hmm. I'm not sure. I've done silk blends on the stove top without any problem. I haven't lost any luster. Thank goodness. I've also done silks in the oven, which, so like I have, I'm, I'm working in my home kitchen. And so I have some personal comfort levels. Like I will do yarn on the stove top, but not the oven because it's harder for me to clean the oven. And it's really easy for me to clean the whole surface of the stove. Uh, and I also won't put acid dyes in my microwave, uh, just, because I would, my personal preference would be to have a dedicated microwave for dyeing. And since I have a steamer basket, may as well use the steamer basket. Um, so that is my personal preference. Um, aw, I, you know, it's funny. Before all of this happened and I had some life circumstances that altered my career path, like teaching at a high school, teaching chemistry at like a like a prep school, like where I went to high school would have been a dream, dream career of mine. And in fact, one of my friends from high school is now a teacher at my high school, middle school. I think she's, and so she's now like the head of the middle school and it's just really, really cool. Like I would have, I would have loved, loved doing that. Um, but then, you know, another thing I would have loved to have do at one point would have been to um, teach like at a liberal arts college or something, but uh, I had some help things that sent me down a different career path. And so I'm happy with where I ended up though. Um, let's see. Oh, I would love it. I love all the Hi Lucas as a poem later. Um, <laughs> you know, there's one point I have on video somewhere, uh, Lucas saying that he wants to work with Kempis when he's older. And so I would be honored, honored to pass it on to him someday. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure if his like total final interests will be will be yarn, but certainly as he gets older, I am more than willing to hire my boys to edit videos and help out with that. And of course, like they want to continue doing yarn, 
then I'm more than happy to have them be be a part of this with me. Um, but I really want to teach you to edit. Because <laughs> that would help me out. And I'm like, I will pay you a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he is a special, special boy. Um, I am very, very proud of him. Uh, can I dye chunky yarn? Um, well, if the question is like in general, can you dye chunky yarn? The answer is absolutely. Can I dye chunky yarn? Not today, probably, um, because given time-wise, this is probably going to be my last batch today. Um, but uh, yeah, I have more bare chunky yarns that I hope to dye in the future. I have some videos in progress, but they're uh, dying to knit ones, and so like I need to actually knit and finish the project to finish the video. <laughs> Oh man, like I, I love, love, love knitting so much. I just have so much less time uh, because, and also like I fulfill a lot of my creative itch with the dyeing now that I just don't have like as much time to like sit, sit and knit that I used to. Um, just doing now. Oh yeah, thank you. The, the color and my Instagram is just at chemnits and you can go in the stories and see like the purples and the rust kind of shine through a bit on there. Um, oh, awesome. I'm so glad that you guys are having, having so much fun. I am having an absolute blast. I'm going to stand back up and uh, yeah, let's move it around and get to it. So check, see if that was Keith being like, what are you yeah. doing? Um, no, it was not my husband. So, all right, let's move this around. Oof, I am loving this. This already feels more pigmented than the first one. You know what this is reminding me of? And I don't know if it's down here. I don't know where it is. There is a leave no dye behind that has like purples and deep blues in it that I kept for myself and I knit into a shawlette. Um, and there's there's definitely pictures of it on my Ravelry, um, but I'm not sure. I've definitely also shown it in some videos, but this is reminding me a bit of that, except I guess one notable difference is that, um, sorry, one notable difference here Sorry, I'm getting distracted by myself. Um, one notable difference here is the like pops of rust. I was trying to think if like I had had the shawl. If it's downstairs, I will check uh, in a little bit because it's possible possible that it's down here in with the winter accessories but I'm not a hundred percent sure I wanted a drop there okay this is the rust that I was a bit obsessed with ah oh and there's some eggplant at the bottom I should add some more water to this um it's getting a bit more concentrated There is some undissolved dye down there. Uh, here is our purple. And there's still a hint in case I feel like we need a little more. I'm actually going to dilute some of this blue right here. So there was a question and it would pertain to acid dyes, but it's basically about like diluting the dye. And one reason for diluting the blue is so that way I can spread it further, which in general, given that I'm going to add darker colors on top, isn't a huge deal. But this allows me to, instead of one squirt, I'm getting a lot more. And so I can layer this more pastel color further than I would have been able to otherwise. And I'm just going to pour that. But that helps with 
color penetration through all of this. And so that was some diluted navy of this navy color. And again, I am adding this color sort of across. And there's enough water in here that that is one thing that's helping these colors penetrate deeper. If the colors, um, if these colors were more, or like if there was less water here in the pan, then the colors wouldn't uh, spread nearly as much. And it means that we would have more like whites and stuff in there, but let's add some there. I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna turn the heat back up a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna let this sit, I think for five minutes before removing it. Now you can move it right away. And sometimes I love to dye with dye powder, add powder and move immediately. So you're not letting it set completely. And that can result in some beautiful colorways. Okay, and uh, I love blueberries. I really want some fresh blueberries, like really bad. Uh, let's see. Um, yay! Um, can I re-dye yarn again with a different color? Yes, um, with an asterisk. So you can always, if you don't like a colorway, you can always over-dye your colors. But at some point, there is a limit with how much color yarn can absorb. So there is a limit. I'm not always sure what that limit is. <laughs> okay, Ryder. Um, I'm not always sure what the limit of how much color you can absorb really is. Um, wait, what kind of snack did you have before? Uh, mm, uh, pirate snack. Do you want a cheese stick? Mm, I think like two of Okay, you get one for you and one for Lucas? And then. Wait, no, what are you getting? There's not cheese sticks in there. How about uh, fuzzy straws? No. What are bags of fuzzy straws? No, you already had pirate's booty. Why don't you get cheese sticks? Mm. I would, how about a blueberry ball? No. And wait, can you say blueberry? Blueberry? Yay, that's a good one! Okay, cheese sticks. Okay. I want. <laughs> Two. For, two for you or one for you and one for Lucas? Uh, one for you and Lucas. Deal. Can you say Lucas? Lucas. Wait, wait, show me the L. Lucas. That's great! Uh, another thing that's funny about blueberries is that's a word that we've been using to work with Ryder on and saying blue instead of blueberry and so bye, bye, bye honey you. you're welcome sweetie <laughs> uh what was i saying oh can you re-dye yarn later so yes there is a limit and i'm not sure if that's like percent or how much it is but at some point um there'll be enough color in the yarn that like it's not going to be able to absorb anymore uh i don't know what that limit is to for sure but also, like if you get to black, then you can't really over dye it, but a lot of other things you can. Um, oh, thank you. This this watercolor -y technique is one of my favorites. And it's fun to show that you can get like deep saturated tones with food coloring. Um, oh, I'm glad it was cute. It, it could have, I was like, please don't turn into a tantrum on live TV. Please don't turn into a tantrum on live TV. Um, Okay, but I actually think I'm letting this sit for one more minute. I'm actually going to send you guys to, I think, a brief commercial break. Some of you may not see it. I'm going to press it as soon as, like, my face disappears. And I'm going to run and see if I can find that shawl I was talking about. Uh, oh, I'm so glad you think they're cute. Um, but, yeah, keep the, keep the questions coming. And now, <laughs> I have no idea if it inserts it when, like, 
at the real time when I press the button or where I am. I could not find it. Where is it? I'm going to check one more place. Um, now this is going to bother me. I have no idea where that shawlette is that's with the similar color. But it is, um, it is, and I can link to the Ravelry page probably. It was definitely a leave no die behind video. Um, Let's see, in the project page. Oh, it's on here. Where did it go yesterday? Okay, the project page does have pictures of the yarn. Um, so here is the, I just, oh no. Okay, I just dropped it into chat. Um, yeah, so I just dropped that into chat. Um, and it is looking really jerky right now, probably because I looked something up on the internet. Sorry about that. Um, hopefully, my community arm guy, hopefully things are going okay. Am I not for myself? Okay, the project page. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh, let's check. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, and I did bring over... This is my winter hat. Um, this is actually, well, there's a few skeins of yarn that I dyed that I never shared anywhere. This is the first 100% wool colorway I ever dyed. Um, and I've been wearing this winter hat for like better parts of a decade, at least eight years. There, if I compare the outside to the inside, like there, you know, after all this time has been some fading, but if you look at it, it still looks vibrant. It's just a little more vibrant on the inside now. Um, but I wear this, you know, all winter. And then through coloring wise, this is um, some yarn that Lucas and Ryder dyed that I did in an autopilot cowl. Um, it's not close to this colorway, but uh, yeah, I figured I'd grab some hand dyed things. Um, okay, I'm gonna go and finish. Um, thank you so much for joining. Okay, let's stand back up and see. Now I do have some leftover dye which I will um, definitely use at 
some point, I think I want to do, oh, this is why we keep moving. Oh dear, hot, hot. Do be careful when you're moving and flipping yarn. So you'll see that we're seeing some blues in, um, that's actually not bad. Um, you'll see that we're seeing some blues in the dye bath, like it hasn't all absorbed, and that is okay. Um, ideally, you know, ideally, like we'd want that to all be striking, but I will add more acid. I'm adding a bit more of this rust color in. But it is important to just keep moving. Um, just keep swimming. And if there's any big pestle patches, I like to try to break those up and focus some color there. And then this is nearly empty. I will literally dilute it. and then actually pour it. Um, I still have a lot more of some of the colors. I have more of that like navy-ish color, but I want to try to open things up to expose some of those areas where I want more color. And that's where we're going to kind of focus the addition of this. And I'm going to let this go for two minutes. And then I'll move it and add some more color. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, you can tell from my Ravelry library that projects, there's a time when I would do 12 shawls in a year, but I also wasn't filming as many videos and things back then. And so uh, it's uh, difficult to knit while filming. <laughs> and it's some things I can knit while editing, but it's pretty difficult to knit while editing. And I feel like a lot of my time is spent doing those two things right now. Oh, and if you are Chemist patrons, I have this month's Die Cut PS ready. It's filmed, it's uploaded. I need to just write the newsletter, which I hope to get out uh, by tomorrow morning. And so then last month's Die Cup PS, which features alpaca yarn, uh, will come up uh, probably tomorrow. So that's my plan. So you made a card. Oh, Sun Yellow is, I, I have issues with Sun Yellow. Um, and you see some insoluble powder. Yep. Um, and when the solution sets, it's, Yes. Um, yep. Sun yellow. Um, hold on. Excuse me. I dislike uh, Jacquard Sun Yellow. I like using it, like if I'm going to use it right away. It, it is not one that stores well in a stock solution. Uh, when I first made the stock, it also, I experienced it, it turned to jelly. And then also, you know, I was able to get the dye all in when it was hot and then it all crashed back out. So the good news is that when you use it, if you put it in a hot dye bath, it will all dissolve and you'll get beautiful color. It's just, you're not gonna, it's not a good color for getting a consistent dye stock. I prefer, I think, Brilliant. I don't know where my left card. Oh, wait, I have a list. Um, I prefer Bright Yellow from Jacquard because it stays in solution better. Um, sun Yellow is like, like it's my nemesis. Uh, and so there's some older videos when I was using it and then you guys can hear me talk about how my medicine. Sorry, I'm trying my Batman voice. Um, so if you've tuned in late, I am using my dedicated dye equipment, even though we are using food coloring today. And I looks like I could be hitting the limit of what I can do. You can see that we've got some blue in the dye bath uh, but again I'm not like super worried about it but there is just this like section here that 
is saying, Rebecca, color me. Break up that section. So we probably added about double the dye on these two skeins um, than we did on that first one that we did just for reference. And I think the rust is going to be really, really subtle um, because it's been covered with so much blue, but it is there. Um, so for reference, here is the first one we did. It is so beautiful. It is just a lot more pastel. I think I'm going to call it on this colorway. I still have some colors left. Um, and I would love to quickly do like a leave no dye behind, but I think that this is going to need to set in and cool. So I did not count. I just added a lot more vinegar. But I think that this is a circumstance where I am going to want to let things cool completely in the pan to let this residual color absorb. And if it's not absorbing, um, one thing that you can do that will help you later on is to add a yarn mop. Um, and sometimes I get questions because people would be like, oh, what kind of mop? I got a question once, what kind of mop did you get the yarn from? When I say yarn mop, I'm talking about using a skein of yarn to mop up and to soak up that extra color that isn't absorbing. And if you do that in the dye pot, sometimes that can help with some of the bleeding later on. Um, so yeah, that is what I do. But in terms of what's left, um, I had two cups of the like custom navy solution. I have a hint of some of the purple actually I don't time it more um, I have some purple and then I have some, a little bit more of that rust color left over and otherwise um, I've gone through all of the dye that I mixed up so uh, I'll probably leave the heat on at least 10 more minutes and then I will uh, remove this and set it aside, but where is my face? So you guys can see that. I think that like, oh yeah, see, you can see what happens without my, uh, the little, at the beginning of the video, um, if you go back to the replay, you'll see me messing around and so I was adding tin foil to like block some of the light from the window coming in. <laughs> um, so yeah, if there's, if you guys have any questions, let, let me know because I'm I will need to do like I will need to just stop soon um, but I'm not planning on adding any more color to this colorway um, the blue on the bottom left of the screen yeah the, a lot of these colors are so pretty um, so you may oh so that was the second one do I like Dharma or Jacquard better you know I like Dharma better but I think it's just because, <laughs> I think it's just, um, I think it's just because I like the jars from Dharma better. Dharma's prices are better, uh, for like the price of a two ounce jar of a Dharma acid dye is only a tiny bit more expensive than the price of a half ounce jar from Jacquard. And the, the half ounce jars are too small for me to poke my fingers in and pull some out. So that's like a weird reason for liking Dharma better, but uh, Dharma has, I think, like 80 different colors, and Jacquard has only 40. And I find that the Jacquard line, like, they have a lot of brights. They don't have as many pas premixed pastels or premixed sort of softer, more dusty colors. Um, yeah, so I think, oh, the Delphinium Blue is not Jacquard. Funny. Um, yeah, so like if I'm even just looking at like the catalog page for Dharma Trading Company, you know, there's some colors where like the, that it just feels like might be kind of missing or that I wish that they had in the catalog. Now, pastels are only 
helpful for like mixing a dye stop for a pastel. Like if you speckle with a pastel color, the color the speckles aren't going to be pastel colored. It's just there's more filler in there. Uh, so that's the main difference with a pastel color. But I, I happen to really enjoy premixed colors. I have heard that um, Dharma colors aren't always the most consistent um, between batch to batch. And I don't think I've reordered any Dharma colors yet. So this isn't something I've experienced. Um, so yeah, I guess that's something to keep in mind. I do have a complete collection of all 40 Jacquard acid dyes, uh, courtesy of um, Dyer Supplier. So thank you, Dyer Supplier, for that. Um, but, and like, I, I like them and I'll use them. I just, yeah, there's some colors, like, I, I wish there isn't something quite like, yeah, there's just a few things that I wish that they had cream mixed, but you can mix almost like with 40 colors, you can mix just about anything. I just don't consider color mixing to be a strength of mine. Uh, and so I like starting with premixed colors and I like dyeing straight with dry powders as well. So having them premixed is like a perk for me when I'm doing the like, the technique that if I was using powders I would have done today, I would have taken like some navy, put it in, moved it a bit with a spoon and done like those splotches in different places and then gone and done another, another color and layered it like that. And so for that, having premixed is great. Um, yeah, so I added more vinegar, I think like four to five tablespoons maybe. Um, oh, I'm so glad that you guys like my videos. Um, so yes, so I've added, you can, so you can add more vinegar to exhaust the rest of the dye. The time for a yarn mop is if, like sometimes there's like a time situation. So like, if I wanted to remove this now, I could. Um, and then if I wanted to reuse that dye bath for something else, I might use a yarn mop to soak up the rest of the color so that way I didn't have to make a whole new dye bath and I could reuse that same water. And so a lot of times over the day of dyeing or a video, I'll use one yarn mop in between stages to soak up the rest of the color and then it'll be like a random color at the very end. Um, so that's something that I do sometimes. Um, yes, so um, everybody is shipping due to like COVID and everything, everyone is shipping slower. I think Dharma is working with a reduced staff right now, so they are still fulfilling orders at the moment. It's just things are going to be slower. Um, and so, and I think that's the case for a lot of other companies. I, it's, yeah, I think that it's good that they're able to operate even at a slower level because if, uh, when the yarn and the dye suppliers have to shut down for, a longer period of time then that's going to trickle down and then the indie dyers are going to have to close up for a period of time um so i mean there's a lot a lot of uncertainty right now like i definitely like my rate of filming is much reduced i'm still able to keep up with my schedule at least my regular schedule not any like special series schedule which makes me sad but uh, I am noticing that the videos I'm filming use fewer skeins of yarn, so therefore I'm not, I'm just not dyeing as much yarn, period. Um, and so therefore like the stock in my shop is starting to like the numbers that I try to keep it at, it's starting to reduce um, just because like my, I'm not able to produce as much because I have the time that I normally could spend filming, I'm with the kids and stuff, so I'm now working my work schedule has shifted from like every other Monday and then Tuesday through Friday until now I get like Thursday morning, Saturday and Sunday mornings. Uh, so yeah, but which reminds me I probably should sign off so I can work and come down and get lunch. Um, Knitpix is shipping again. Yes, they did reopen for shipping and I can drop in. That is not the link I wanted. Um, I'm going to drop into the chat my Knitpicks affiliate link for Bear Yarn. Um, so I am, oh, not, I am an affiliate, which means I do earn commission for any sales made through my links. Um, I am an affiliate with Knitpicks and Amazon. Those are the most relevant ones for today's video, but I'm also an affiliate with Dyer Supplier and Knitcrate and Paradise Fibers and some other 
uh, companies, but I think those are all the ones that I mention the most often. And I try to be like really transparent about this, but I can also say that the, it's sort of like a win-win. Like I was using Knitpix Yarn from in these videos for many years before I became an affiliate. So it's kind of nice that like, oh, like by sharing with you the exact things that I'm using, then I can earn some commission on it, which helps, which then goes back into more yarn and dye and all that stuff. Um, oh, I don't know why it's hiding some rows. Um, am I am I planning to do any more evil fairy? Well, I would love to do more evil fairy type videos where I use way too much dye. I think I have a better handle on using like just the right amount. So the evil fairy was an oops. It was a mistake. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I can get to that intentionally, but that could be a fun thing to try. At the moment, I'm doing less. Uh, at the moment, I am doing less uh, dye powder stuff just because like, even though I'm using my dedicated dye equipment, it's going to take me not very long to like transition between this and my kitchen kitchen for my family. And if I'm using dye powders, there's just a lot more cleanup that I have to do in between. So I think that uh, what I foresee, I foresee a lot more food coloring based content. I foresee me using up a lot of dye stops that I've already made and sort of using up my supply of dye stocks. And then occasionally I'll come in with some powders, but it's just, it's a lot harder to do when I have limited chunks of time. Um, I do not sell any dye for yarn. I buy dye from um, dyer supplier mostly. I know, uh, no, I buy my dye from Dharma Trading Company mostly. Dyer supplier now sells Jacquard acid dyes, um, but I still, I buy, since I buy mostly Dharma ones myself, I buy them from a uh, Dharma trading company. Do I sell yarn? So I sell the yarn that I dye. Um, so my shop, and I'll drop that in the chat. Um, most of the yarn that I dye in my videos does go into my Etsy shop, Canvas Creations. I just dropped the link in the chat. Um, but I don't, I don't sell their yarn. I buy most of my bear yarn from Knit Picks. Um, I, the link, my Nitpix affiliate link is in the video description. I also have added it to the chat. Um, if you search for Dharma Pop Pop Pop, my videos are the first ones linked on YouTube. Yes, yes, yes. That's awesome. Um, I love it when things show up first. And that is all thanks to you guys. So you guys engaging with my videos helps them show up on search and then helps people find me randomly when they search for things. That is great. Um, Oh, I'm so glad I could answer all your questions. That's the best part about doing these lives is that I can help to the best of my ability, right? And you guys can see real time like what I'm doing. So in my videos, I try to show almost all of the actual dyeing process. I tend to not like skip things, even if I might go into a time lapse, but it's nice to show like, oh, okay, there are these steps when I'm waiting. And so right now I'm chatting versus like going and replying to YouTube comments or whatever. Hello, hello everyone. All right. Um, I would love to stay and chat more, but I am, um, okay, one more question. What's the fiber content of the yarn I sell? It varies. I would say the most is either, um, uh, like a superwash merino nylon blend. There's also a lot of just non-superwash wool in there. Uh, but there are a lot of different yarn bases I use since I test out different brands and things. So, uh, it's worth, you can always message me to ask if two skeins are on the same base or not. Um, because there are even a few different 7525 soft yarn bases from different brands. Uh, but yes, I do need to stop. Thank you guys so, so, so much for tuning in today. I think this has been one of the best streams ever. So again, if you are not subscribed, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Um, and that bell icon, if you press it, if you smash it, <laughs> uh, that'll turn on notifications so that way you can know whenever I do a new video. Uh, my regular schedule is to publish videos every Tuesday and Friday mornings, but I also have videos come out uh, randomly, like there's always like some extra videos that come out every month, and I always do one of these dialogue live streams every month. I hope to do more streams even with all the stay at home stuff. I really enjoy it, and yeah, you don't want to miss it. I also do unboxings, uh, and so it's just a lot of fun, and I'm excited to open up 
uh, some of the knit crate when it shows up. I know they're on the way. Um, and I have a lot of Easter egg videos that are probably coming up because I've got a lot of new stuff. I think I've got to do like a pastel versus normal versus neon. I got plans. I got plans. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so, so much. Um, and yeah, if you want to support the channel, subscribing and commenting, that's the biggest way to do it. Share the videos with your fiber loving friends. Uh, but you know, I do, as I discussed, I have an Etsy shop and I have a Patreon. Uh, I even have some limited merch on Zazzle. <laughs> uh, there's links to all of that in the video description of all my videos. So, um, yes. Uh, my grandparents' song, their like wedding song is Look for the Silver Lining. And so that is something my grandma has taught me. My grandma taught me from a young age. And to honor her memory, I continue to try to find the silver linings in all of this. And so, all right. My new, my new son has a big social distance hug from me to all of you. I'm trying to hug you through your computer uh, very safely. <laughs> uh, but seriously, I wish all of you health and um, a moment of escape to smile and laugh uh, through all of this. Because this is hard. This is really hard. Um, Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad. I absolutely love what I do. All right. I'm signing off before I get in trouble. Not that I'd get in big trouble, but I know they're itching to come down and honestly, I'm hungry too. So, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Now the awkward time to make sure that the stream goes through and finishes up to the end. So I sit and I wait until to press the button because I'm never sure is when I click and stream, if it stops it. And I could go and look at this. I never remember to go look. I'm never sure if it stops it where I stop it or yeah, in real time or yeah. But anyway, if you heard all this, thank you all for watching.